Do you remember in the 20th century that the question was raised as to whether the railways could survive? After the Second World War, private car use and airline industry gradually took precedence over the aging railways. For many decision makers, rail was not the future. This was the situation when Japan, in order to alleviate bottlenecks on the route between Tokyo and Osaka, inaugurated a new railway line on the 1st of October 1964. A new train began operating at over 210 kilometers per hour. It was the Shinkansen, safe, comfortable, reducing journey time by half, and able to carry large numbers of people. The Shinkansen was an immediate success. High-speed rail was born. Other countries faced with similar concerns followed suit by developing new technologies for high-speed rail. France inaugurated the Paris-Lyon high-speed line in 1981. In 1991, Germany in its turn believed that high-speed rail was the future. Then came Italy and Spain. Wherever a high-speed line opens, air travel declines. The first international routes were opened. The project to form a large European network started to take shape. At the start of the 21st century, from America to Asia, new countries made the leap. Nearly every year, new lines and new services were created. The networks expanded. And in the space of a few years, China built the largest high-speed rail network in the world. High speed has been comparable to a renaissance for rail passengers. From tracks to signaling, from traction to operations, almost everything has had to be reinvented. Space has become time. The journey is addressed as a whole, up to the point of arrival. In the search for a seamless journey, High-speed rail is partnering and interconnecting with other modes of transport and borrowing the best things about them. Stations are also responding to this demand for fluidity. By serving the territories and promoting mobility, high-speed is stimulating the economy everywhere. Just like the railways, high-speed has proved to be the most environmentally friendly means of mass transport. Where will high speed be in 10 years time? High speed will continue to develop whilst entering new areas, increasingly efficient, more comfortable, more welcoming. But in 20, 30, or 50 years, who knows what it will become? The other modes of transport will waste no time in changing, improving, or undergoing radical transformation. The age of disruption is here. High speed rail will not escape this trend. Who knows what it will become? Who knows where it will take us? It is up to us, people in the railways, to invent its future.